Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Jeremy at Hilt's Machine Works, main machinist channel on YouTube. And today I had a customer bring in a shaft here that is pretty damaged and we're gonna fix it for him. You can see here is where a bearing rides. And that is the bearing had been slipping and was run a long time like that, wore the shaft down. And also the Woodruff key that the uh, clutch of this rides onto is all wobbled out and it had also been run loose. So we're gonna repair these today. We're gonna get the customer uh, happy so they can use this once again for what they do. With it all disassembled here, we can see what we're gonna be doing. I got a piece of material that gives me enough extra length that if we goof up on this, we have enough to do it over once. Can't make two mistakes, but we could make one if we had to. So it was a good idea to have just enough material to do that. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the Logan 922. We're gonna do this all manual, no digital readout, no fancy pants stuff, the old school way. I'm gonna turn this diameter here, which is gonna be at 0.986. And um, once I'm done with that, we're gonna put in this feature here. We're gonna put a radius in here, you can see that. And then I'm gonna turn down this piece, and then we're gonna do the taper. When we're done with the taper, this had a Woodruff key slot. We're gonna do the Woodruff key slot with the milling attachment. We're gonna do this all on the lathe. This will be fun. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna single point those threads. So let's get started. center drilled it, faced it off. We're gonna support it with the center the whole time. And right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some blue dicum, and we're gonna make a mark here and use a carriage stop for repeatability. And we're gonna start turning that first diameter. Now remember, we're only roughing right now. So I'm just gonna use a scale dimension of three and a quarter. We're gonna mark this. I like to have a nice witness mark like that. And I'm gonna set a carriage stop up for the rest of this. First cut's going and I like the finish. Looking great so far. This will be a little bit of a process. Remember now that this is just roughed out because I'm not sure yet. We're gonna inspect on that um, thread to really make sure what's going on because the thread was really bunged up on that other one. Um, what I'm aiming at is a fine thread, 7 16 so it might be a left-hand thread. Now, here, we gotta make that groove. And I've ground a high-speed steel tool with little radiuses in the corner to prevent it from making this part weak. We need to go 100 thousandths wide, 100 thousandths deep uh, on the diameter. So 50 thousandths per side. Let's go ahead and take a cut. We use plenty of oil here. Slow the spindle down some. Lock the carriage. Now, spin in. Good. I like this. All right. Came out nice.
now that the taper's all done, I have this set up in the machine with the milling attachment, and we're gonna finish this Woodruff key seat. I've already started it, and I took a kind of a test cut. I've gone about half the, a little over half the distance I wanna go. I've got 100 thousandths left um, to get a 5 30 seconds key in there. You can see I have the key cutter in the spindle, in the collet chuck. The shaft is being held by the milling attachment, and the milling attachment is pretty cool because not only can you, you know, swivel it with the compound, but you also have this here, a graduated dial. And that's what I did. I got it close with the graduations, and then I mounted a brown and sharp best test in the spindle to indicate this in. Now, why did I do that? You will get some differing opinions on how to do this properly on the internet. And you know it has to be true because it's on the internet. But uh, some guys say, well, this is, this is a round cutter. You don't have to have the key seat uh, in line with the taper. You should just have it in line with the axis of the shaft, just plunge right down in. But then you have different chordal depths and stuff on your, uh, on your key. Some guys like to make a tapered key. I don't. I like to do it this way. This is going to work really well for the customer's application. When we're done, the key here is going to be in line with the taper. And, of course, if you look at the hub, let's go see the hub. On the hub, it's not tapered. The key way is not tapered. The key way follows the taper itself, not the axis. And so I think it's best to do it this way. It's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm sure somebody on the internet's gonna criticize it, but this is the way it's gonna be done. It's gonna work just great for this customer. material was inch and a quarter. I couldn't get inch and an eighth at the time, so I'm turning this down to inch and an eighth. And uh, after that, we're going to blend a couple of radiuses in here. We're going to single point. We're going to put that square key seat on the other side, and we'll be all ready for this customer to come get their part. We're going to cut the shaft to length. Basing it to the desired one. Using a travel indicator, I have touched off my end mill on the top of the part. I moved to the center line, accounting for the um, diameter of the end mill. We are ready to put in our square key seat. Okay, you can see here I'm set up with the lathe milling attachment. I have my shaft here. I've already put the Woodruff key in, all that. 
We're waiting on the customer to decide if they want to have a left hand thread on this or not. Um, we're putting this key seat in. This is all being done on a manual lathe, no digital readout. And what you can see here, I have a dial uh, travel indicator set up on the side of the milling attachment because sometimes the milling forces wants to spin on the compound. So by setting that there, I can kind of just watch to make sure there's no serious movement taking place, a deflection um, on the milling attachment itself. And I've used layout here. We're just doing a basic, a real basic quarter inch uh, square key, three and three quarters of an inch is long. Okay, so in the middle of my filming, the customer showed up and they decided they wanted the 7 16 14 thread on the end of it and they needed it done ASAP. So I couldn't film the footage of the single pointing, but I did get to take some pictures of the shaft when it was completed. Um, when the customer was standing there waiting for the part to be done, I had to boogie on out and get that thing done and I couldn't mess around with filming it. But here's some pictures of the completed part and the customer was very satisfied, very happy. And it was really fun doing that all on a manual machine, no digital readout, nothing like that. The real old school way of doing all of it, including the milling, in the lathe. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. And now take a look at these pictures.